an uncertain situation because it keeps extending the time that I won't be able to go home and visit <sighs> visit my family and my friends <sighs> anyway um yeah, this is not really going to be my normal happy-go-lucky videos about my adventures here in Hokkaido. And don't get me wrong, I love life here. And yeah, if you're new here, my name is Ash. Thanks for stopping by. The channel is called Namara Ash. And I'm an Aussie living in Sapporo in Hokkaido. And the whole point of this channel is to kind of share about my lifestyle here. And um, I mean... The world has been pretty crazy lately uh, and I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. Um, I guess it goes in waves um, and I guess I just wanted to talk about life as a foreigner or an expat, somebody living abroad in these kind of unstable and uncertain times. Um, I'm obviously <laughs> did not plan to talk about this. I'm just chilling out in my apartment now. I've taken down my hair and I'm kind of wearing my pajamas, but <laughs> I saw a news article. It said that international travel to Australia could potentially be banned until July 2021, which is a another year away, which for me puts me in a precarious situation not precarious but uh an uncertain situation because it keeps extending the time that i won't be able to go home and visit <sighs> visit my family and my friends and you know like The hardest thing about living abroad is <laughs> having your family and friends so far away. And don't get me wrong, I have a lovely support group here. I have amazing friends here and I'm really happy with my life here. And you know, I have a lot of um, I have a lot of amazing opportunities here, and it's very exciting. But all of that, sorry, very raw, emotional video. <laughs> this one will be, but. I just wanted to share some of the struggles um, of living abroad during these times because I haven't really seen any videos about that and I know that part of it is probably to do with demonetization and other things, other bigger things that are happening in the world which, which deserve more attention. But I thought in case anybody else I know there's a lot of people who live abroad and um, I mean a lot, majority, not majority, but a lot of my friends are living abroad far away from their family and we all do this knowing that eventually we can go back to visit from time to time and maybe that might be once a year, once every two years or once every five years or whatever but at least I, I I think the difference is we we do that knowing that there will be a time where we can go back and visit for me personally I try to go back once a year because um, yeah I'm very close with my family and my friends back in Oz and going back is something really important for me to spend quality time with everybody in real life and as much as I'm appreciative of technolo technological advances which have allowed video calls and 
being able to see people face to face. It's not the same. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing, but it's not the same. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen. And some of these um, headlights are um, probably just clickbait. Nobody knows really what's going to happen. I mean, I don't even know if that was clickbait because it's what the government said. But, you know, the government also said they don't know what's going to happen. And then that, then they had a Australian politics. Like I don't understand why, but the the minister of tourism said, "Oh, so this is a good time for Australians to start dreaming about their holidays." I'm like, that doesn't help us. Why would you say that? <laughs> that doesn't help. Um, and yeah, there was nothing in that article referring to people in my situation, the Aussies living abroad, and I know there's a lot of Aussies living abroad. Um, and this situation, I mean, it hasn't just affected people abroad. And for me, in the grand scheme of things, I'm actually quite lucky because I, you know, I still have part-time job. I can still support myself. Um, I can still continue my research. I can still live here, um, which is something some people couldn't do. They had to cut their research short or cancel their research or go home early. Um, I also have like friends, one of my friend who gave birth recently and she couldn't have her parents with her to support her, which was kind of the plan because she's living abroad as well and her parents couldn't come over anymore so i i'm not pregnant <laughs> i can still continue my research i can still work i can still s support myself so in the grand scheme of things i i don't i'm lucky i know i'm lucky and i i'm grateful for that every day but sometimes it just hits me and i just miss everybody and I don't know, like in Japan, thing after the state of emergency was released, things kind of got really busy all of a sudden and the general atmosphere, and I don't know if that's just Japanese culture or what is going on, but it's not as strict as, for example, my home as Australia or something like that. It's... I mean, this whole time, even during state of emergency, um, the regulations and rules haven't really been that strict here. And it's been more about the responsibility of the individual to kind of follow the recommendations. After the state of emergency was lifted, a part-time job started, all of a sudden my research is getting busier. Um, everything's just going crazy. So I'm... I guess I am also just kind of stressed out at the moment with my life and I feel like there was a, a moment during this unpredicted situation where everything was really quiet and I was really free because my jobs stopped and I my social outings stopped and I kind of panicked a little bit I, I mean I went in in waves and I think a lot of people went through waves as well like I went through the productive wave where I was exercising every day and studying Japanese every day and focusing on my research and then I went through the depression and the freaking out and the breakdown after like putting too much pressure on myself to achieve too many things every day and then I got used to the the kind of the silence of being in my room by myself most days and studying by myself most days and not having human interaction and I kind of got used to it and then the state of emergency was lifted which I assumed would have been extended but it was lifted and then all of a sudden everything started up again all at the same time and then I panicked and got really stressed out again and I'm still struggling really struggling to kind of organize my time I'm over committed I mean, the state of emergency kind of 
made it clear to me that I I live a life where I am generally over committed and I am generally burning the wick at both ends. Yeah, I guess I'm just going through a lot of things at the moment and but I am like one thing that I am glad about is that I am trying to do these YouTube videos and trying to do them every day and even not every day, no, impossible. Trying to do them once a week. And of course I don't have time to make some beautiful masterpiece every week um, to learn new editing techniques or to fix my camera because my camera uh, I seem to struggle to be able to fiddle with the settings when it's in video mode and I don't really have the time to fix on, fix those things and my, computer, my camera is also broken so I need to go and buy some screws to fix something on it um so i apologize that the quality of the videos at the moment won't be so good um but i am endeavoring to push them out once a week and with it each week that i hope that i do get a little bit better just very slowly like i'll be learning new things every week and that's something really special to me so you know it's not all bad and this message has gone completely rambling and um, yeah just to bring it back to the main point I guess I just I wanted to put out this video to, sh to show people that it's not always a an amazing paradise of Pokemon and sexy salary men <laughs> and you know amazing sparklers and rainbows and unicorns and whatever um, living abroad in Japan, although I do love living here, you can get homesick and I mean in the past I only really got homesick if um, generally I would get the most homesick when I was sick, like physically ill because I would just really crave the comforts of home and I was kind of tired of going to the doctor and trying to navigate that as well is a little bit of a nightmare but the more you do it the more you get used to it but um yeah I guess at this time of uncertainty uncertainty it yeah really it really makes it difficult and things will be okay and we will get through this but there are times where you just have to have a bit of a cry and have to have a little bit of a have to kind of sit in these feelings and these emotions and I guess that's that's not a bad thing um that's natural and I suppose I also part of me also wanted to put this out there in case there's other people living abroad and also feeling these same things but maybe feeling like there's some they shouldn't be feeling like that or whatever. Um, I think it is normal and I think a lot of people are going through this at the moment and I'm sure we will all get through this. Um, and I am wearing my pyjamas which say this is how we roll and <laughs> this is definitely not how I'm going to be rolling for the rest of my time here but um, anyway. I'm still going to endeavor to make videos every week. I still have a lot of um, video material and I also have some some fun video stuff that I filmed a couple of years ago as well, um, including my parents' experience with the earthquake. Okay, the video just cut out for some reason. I have no idea why, but anyway, um, yeah, I don't know why it cut out, but anyway, I just wanted to say that I'm going to continue to make videos every week, so please subscribe, and yeah, I'll be making videos about my life as an Aussie here in Hokkaido. I still have plenty of exciting things to show you um, about my adventures here, and I also have a lot of film from the past two years that I haven't edited yet. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything, and thanks for sitting through this video, and I'll catch you later. Bye!